Hi, uh, so today there's a couple things I want to work on um, in, in the punching. Things that we don't often hear about uh, that will help to improve your punch, get a little more impact out of it. Is a lot of people punch, but if the hand is down here, like in a classical karate position, the punch does this. So, the hand is below the elbow. When you're punching, unless you're coming from an uppercut or something like that kind of motion, the elbow, the elbow should be uh, below the hand. So if my hand is here, the elbow should be in this position. You never see a boxer punching with the, the elbow above the hand. So think of it like this. My hand, like I have a sharp put. Something in my hand here, the elbow is below it, so I can actually push it this way. Right? It would be difficult to have a sharp put down here and try to push it up. So think of it as a circular motion with the hand. So if I punch, my hand will drop this way, just to kind of get the, the muscle memory after what I'm doing here, punching and dropping the hand. So I'm always punching from this position, never from here. If my hand is here, what will happen is it will come up automatically to that position. Um, if I was to do a push-up, it's very difficult to do a push-up from here. This is the position you're going to need to push up. So your hands up by the shoulder. So, what we'll do is we'll get, we'll get a motion of, of thinking, like, like throwing a ball. If you had a ball, your hand was down here, you'd bring the ball up and you would throw it this way. So I think from here, my body actually stays back and then the upper body goes and the ball, the arm follows afterwards. So the body is always leading. So I go this way, the hand will come up and punch. So it's a big exaggeration right now to teach the muscle memory, but eventually it becomes much, more, much smaller and more compact. So, um, so what, what we can try to do is if, if you just stand, I'll go sideways, if you stand on your, your what would be your back leg, if you're right, it would be your right leg. So think stand this way, let your arm hang. Now I'm going to slide my, my foot forward and leave the upper body behind. And then from here I'm going to use my upper body to pull the arm. So if I'm going to do that motion where I'm going to pull the arm, I wouldn't want to pull the arm and then do this. These two are working in an opposite direction. I want to go this way and let the upper body pull into my punch. From here, one, two, one, two. Just like throwing a ball, except I don't have to come above my head for that, right? Okay, so, um, did you grab that pen? the body motion, I want, to, I want to propel my arm. I don't want to use my arm to propel itself. You don't want to punch with the arm. The muscles are way too small. I want to use all the big muscles. So what I do is I slide, just slide the front foot in, and then like I want to do a head bite. This way, and one, one. So I'm, I'm not leaning backwards, I'm just leaving my shoulders behind. Leave them behind, right? One. And really, I'm not putting a lot of effort into that. I'm just using a transfer of weight. Here, and I transfer the weight. Here's the punch, right? One. 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 Now, if I get that motion, and I don't bring my hand up to here, it's going to be funny. You can see how the pad wants to go up. I want to hit down, like there's a circle happening here. This is the circle. Now, each time from here, one, two, and down. One more time. So that's an exaggeration, I'm trying to get the feeling of pulling down with my abs here. So, um, keep the pad down. So let's just try this. Maybe do it with me. If you stand next to me. What you do? Whichever you left, you want to use your left hand. Yeah. Okay. So just think like you're trying to stop somebody here. Now keep your fingers in that position. Come around. Bring the hand up, and then just punch. All right. So I'll do the other side. So from here, and just drop. Think. Drop your wrist first. You can do your left. So this way. 
bring it up so the elbow is below the hand and punch. Again, bring the hand up. So from here, it's like I have this shot put in my hand now. And I want to punch. And you only need to make your fist on the way there. Don't tighten your hand up here. That stifles everything and puts the brakes on here. So everything is fighting itself. From here, just nice and easy into that position, right? Again, bring it around and up. Again and up. Again and up. Good. Okay. So now just what we're gonna do is stand on your on your on your left leg. Okay. So from here, the hand just hanging, everything relaxed. Would you put the other hand forward? Now slide your front foot forward, leave the upper body behind. And now you're gonna start to lead with your upper body, bring the hand up and punch. Again, ready? So the one, two, three. Okay, I'll do the other side, you can keep doing that side. One, two, and three. So we don't want to do this. We don't want to rotate. Rotating just breaks everything down. We don't, we don't need the rotation. We get the power from doing this motion. A rotation means that if I'm, if I'm fighting and he's a little bit sideways here, the tendency is for this to happen. How many times are we fighting and the punch slides? Uh, you're in a tournament and the referee says, slipped, right? Punch slipped. So, let's turn on the sides. So if I'm, if I'm going with a rotation and I punch this way, I'm gonna get that motion. I get power, but I also, I get a big gap because if I wanna do two punches, I have to go one and come back two. And that's very often when you get hit. So, go from uh, in between my punches, you're gonna punch. So I go like this, wait, wait, wait. So I'm gonna punch. And now as I'm coming back, that's usually where you get hit, in between, right? So do that again. So I go this way, I slip, and then he, in between. It takes too long. But if I, don't, if I don't have that rotation, I can come in with one, two. Even if he's sideways, my hand will tend to slip, but I'm ready with the next one. But if my body slips, I have overcommitted. It's difficult to come back again, right? So what I'm gonna do, if you just stand up as a target, my shoulders stay, Parallel to his shoulders. I don't want to go this way. I want to go this way. All right. So that's why we're going to be very square here. Very square. All right. One, two, three. All right. So let's try a few more. Maybe if you can do something. Right. So face the mirror. We're going to face the camera. So the jaw hang. So this is a very exaggerated motion to, to teach the muscle memory. Right. So slide in. Okay, so the arm is actually all the way back here. Now, as he starts to bring his chest forward, the hand will come up, and boom, body goes in here again. So you can actually get a little bit bigger motion, put your head more forward and backwards. One, and that's better. Again, you can start to hear the punch sounds a little bit different, it's more relaxed, right? Good, again. If he doesn't do that, the only way the arm will move is if he moves it with the muscles in the arm. And much more acceleration, much looser, right? Okay? Good. It's like throwing a ball, right? That's nice. Again. Yeah. Good. Okay. So let's do another one and you're gonna hold the position if you can bring the camera around this way still. Okay, so go down, flip the punch. Hold it there. He's got this nice stretch happening in here. So what he's relying on is this motion, not this motion. Okay? So it's much more difficult for the opponent to see it as well. Okay, so back again, let's try it again. Let the arm hang and just, boom. that's nice, yeah? And you get a nice elongation in the shoulder here, what we're looking for. Right. Stretch this as much as you can. Okay, let's get back again. All right, good. So another thing I wanna work on is the, this motion in the body. See, we have, we have a forward and backward motion, but we also have a side to side motion. We don't want the rotation too much, okay? Sensei Kimura tried to eliminate that, you know, 30 years ago, the rotation. So sometimes it's okay to rotate because if I'm standing here and I want to punch there, I, I have to rotate, okay? And sometimes we also do some rotation to torque, to take up the slack. Okay, that's the rotation, but we don't want to do this kind of thing with the punch, okay? It breaks the opposite side, you lose a lot of power from that. Um, so, if you imagine that you're using these big muscles here, you've got 
with your abs and part of your abs and your obliques down here. At the same time, you have these two big muscles down here, the erectus muscles. So we want to try to use those in, in our punch. We're trying to get power from every possible muscle we can. And the biggest muscles are the ones that give the most power. So Sensei Kimura used to say, well, think like a penguin. Like a penguin has no weight. So when a penguin walks, it walks like this. All right? And so we used to do, like a Mike and Yakuzuki would be like a oh, one, two, three. He was having us do that, so we learned how to use these muscles. So if you think, if you're just standing in, the, in, the, in the, this position and you want to punch, think of pulling the opposite shoulder straight down into that position. So I'm pinching these muscles here as tight as I can and stretching the opposite side. I'm not doing this though, right? My shoulder, if I go from the side, I'm actually just dropping my punch. I drop my shoulder. So imagine if he was punching from my face, the punch is coming and I want to duck that. Right? So he punches my face, and I'm going to duck and hit. So I'm just going to do this. So I'm not doing it because I want to duck punches. I'm doing it because I want to learn how to use these muscles. So if I'm in this position here, again, the hand will come up, punching from here. Don't punch from down here. So if you want to, sometimes you can just have the hand in this position to stop. So what I'm going to do is punch and drop this way. You see that? So look how much of an exaggeration I'm making. Some people feel like they're doing an exaggeration here. That's not enough. I want to see, like my ribs are going to crash into my pelvis here. And I'll punch the other side, the same thing. Now my shoulder is not up. If I was like this, that means I'd be standing in this position like this, my shoulder up. Shoulder is still down. But what happens is both shoulders are down, I'm just tilting. And that's the position, right? Coming up and punching here. So that's just teaching me how to use these muscles. Eventually, I don't need to do all this motion. Eventually, I'm actually doing it now. You don't notice it so much, but this is all working. But to learn it, we make it bigger, right? So let's do a little bit of impact. Can you hold the hand up? So I don't know if there's an angle here. So I'm just going to stand feet parallel in a good position, right? So how do I get power? Well, I could get power this way, but we don't want to rotate, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to think this way, like a catapult, like, like a seesaw. This one goes down, and this one comes up. And from here, I drop my shoulder to start, and I'm going to use my body to pull. breaking, 50% of my power is leaking out that side. So again, I'm pulling down. As I pull down, watch what happens to my arm. Like if I had it inside a sock, inside my pocket here, I would want to go like this and pull it out. If I was in a barrel, like in a big wooden barrel, my arms are here, I can't lift my arm out because the barrel's going to hit, it hit the side of the barrel, I tilt, then I can lift my arm out. Right? So that's what I'm doing here. I'm in the barrel, I'm pulling the arm out, right? pulling it, pull. And in my finishing position, I'm actually in a very solid position on the side. So if I'm right here, just drop the pad for a second in the arm, put it back, come push my shoulder. Just gonna push it up and come around, push it down on my shoulder, right to the ground. Very easy for me to hold in that position. Very solid. I'm actually connecting it, connecting it into the opposite leg. Okay. So if I could also go like this. That's the same thing. Even though I'm on this leg, I'm still connecting it to the opposite side. All right. So. So again, this motion. All right. Okay, so um, 
What you can do as an exercise is just do about you know, 10, 15, 20 of these. Just, you don't have to be strong, it doesn't have to be fast. Just get the muscle memory, get the coordination, figure out how it's all gonna work together. All right. Once we get to a point where this is quite natural, we don't have, like I said before, we don't have to make it so big anymore. But the muscles are working under the skin now. So instead of this big motion, it's all happening inside, underneath the skin. Less noticeable, less telegraph. Um, so the next stage would be, another way to practice it, instead of dropping my shoulder, dropping the shoulder is the same as lifting the hip. Okay? It's just another way of learning it. The more different ways you can practice something, the more you'll start to understand it. So, when I punch now, instead of dropping the shoulder, I can just lift. See? Same, same kind of thing. So, if you notice, I'm not just lifting the hip, I'm rotating the hip. Okay? This is contrary to what a lot of people believe, a lot of people think we need to rotate this way. This kind of motion to get power. But a lot of my energy is leaking out that way. So what I'm going to do is, at the point of impact, just before impact, I start to rotate in. That stretches this side, it locks all the joints nice and tight, and it stops me from losing energy, right? So, so. That's the position. So my shoulders are still relatively level, but the hip is coming up. So if I take that now and I do a classical, I was able to stash it, I can drop my shoulder. Yeah. All right. Uh, I can do like a bus I die in motion, where I'm going, I think like this in bus I die, tilting the head to the side. So I can shoot it from over the side first. Imagine this position here. Drop my shoulder. This is also nice to do because this elbow now helps me to learn how not to lose the shoulder here. I've got to keep that in, keep it forward. So, this motion for my side. That's my lean. Okay? So, now if I get to a point where I start to understand that, I want to be able to do it without showing that anymore. I can't fight that way. So what I do, I still work on the crunch here. I'm still, I'm still doing it, but I'm able to crunch. Same way. I'm not leaning as much though. in kata, you're in this position. Okay. Like you'll see, say pi, they come in, and it's this position here. Okay. So, with that, then why would anybody put that in kata? Well, some people say, well, so I can turn. Well, you can turn without that. Um, what I like to think of is how it's going to help me make my technique better. So, this would be the motion in the kata, right? Here. What it does, if I keep my foot on this side, it tends to hold back this side of my body. So it stabilizes this side for me. It stops me from doing this and breaking. So I'm going to keep this side forward as I get. You get a nice, solid shot here. And it's opposite to what a lot of people believe. A lot of people think that, well, this should come forward. But actually, I'm holding it slightly back. If you can look at the, the creases in my, my shirt, you can see how the torsion in my body, right, twisting this way here, all right? That's the position I want to be in, right? So from here, that's the position there. That position. So this is really not necessary. It's just helping me to learn how to stabilize that side. Um, so this is another way you can practice. You can practice just moving this position. So this shoulder, this shoulder almost in front of the other shoulder. 
keep you that, to, to learn that feeling. So it's very solid there. So if I'm in this position here, you can put the pad down, come and push on this shoulder. Push straight down. Right? So it's quite solid, right? So I'm not in a weak position. Uh, this, this side is stabilized, which is what I'm looking for. So I'm learning to stabilize it this way, and at the same time as that, I'm getting this position here. So these are things you can start to put into your punch. I'm not saying it's the only way to punch, but it will add um, more shock value to your punch. It helps you to learn how to lock the joints, because when the joints don't lock, there's a lot of absorbency there, and a lot of energy leaks out. Um, it would be like hold the pad. If I don't lock this joint, and I punch, you can see how shock goes right through my body. That is energy leaking, that's the wasted energy. Anytime my body gets this kind of a shock, that energy is coming from somewhere. It's coming from my punch. So I create all this energy, and then I lose it all by being in a weak position. All right? So I punch, everything is because I'm loose. I need to tighten everything 100% at the very end and lock. And this is all, I'm going to do that. See? From here. Okay? Same as this. Same as this. So I want to stay here. Okay. Still hit pretty hard, even though I'm, I'm sideways. All right? Um, and if you come around to the back side, at the point of impact, if you look at my back, you can see again, stretching in my unit of my, my t-shirt shows the torque. That's the lock, right? So if you take a towel and you twist it really tight, it becomes very stiff. Okay? If the towel's not twisted, it's very loose, right? The tighter you twist it, the stiffer it is. So at the point of impact, my whole body is locked into one unit. Almost like I have one bone in my whole body. Not a, a whole group of individual bones flopping around. Okay, so um, to demonstrate some of the, how I want you to try to learn to use the body in the sideways motion. Um, we use the bar, right? So what he's gonna do, just start with a punch, with a left punch. So we wanna get him to lean this way. Just a big exaggerated lean, right? So now his shoulders are actually at this angle, and this way, okay? Now, imagine that I'm gonna hold his hand, like he's got his hand in this big sock. He's gonna, I'm gonna hold, but I'm not gonna hold tight. He's gonna pull the arm out with his body and then punch, yeah. Okay, back again. So this time, pull your arm out with your arm. Just use your arm with your body. It doesn't go, right? His yes. elbow gets stuck. You do it again? Yeah, because people go like, like this, right? And the elbow's gonna get stuck in the barrel. Go ahead, pull. <laughs> All right, you don't wanna do that. So he's gonna use this side to pull down. He's gonna pull down and the other side's gonna pull up, right? Gonna pull the arm out and punch, good. Okay, now if I do this, you say that? If I do this side the same way, right? He's gonna pull up and boom, yeah. And again, in here. So this is just a little drill you can do if you have somebody to help you. Yeah, don't hold the arm too tight, try to do it. It doesn't work, correct? Right? I'm just creating a little bit of resistance, a little bit of a drag here, okay? Pull and punch, good. Okay, punch the other side, pull, yeah. So you can see the shoulder starts to work before the hand comes up, right? We don't want this to happen. Pull the shoulder down. That shoulder motion now is wasted. It's kind of like having a whole lot of dominoes, and you knock over the dominoes, and before they get to the end, you knock the end one over. The last one didn't get any effect from the first one. You've just broken the chain. So, this is a chain of dominoes. These dominoes have to fall, and it pulls the other one, pull, 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 and one, good. And same again here. So this now is going to pull, and use the body to pull and punch. Yeah. Okay? So, just keep doing it by yourself. That's it. And pull. Good. Nice. And pull. Okay. So the arm doesn't even start to bend until he's almost all the way that way. Now watch what happens here. This distance now will become much shorter. Everything contracts on this side. So pull down. Pull, 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 and release. Fine. Yeah. Okay? Same again. Now watch what happens. As this side contracts and gets shorter, 
you'll start to, start to pull and then the punch goes. Yeah. So you've got to figure out the timing yourself. Okay, we don't, can't tell you exactly when the punch comes out, but it should feel like a pull. The body is always leading and pulling, right? So this is, again, a big exaggeration, but it's going to teach you how to use it. So eventually, it starts to look like this. You don't, I'm still doing that, but you don't see the huge motion. Okay? So let's take fighting stance. So let your arm hang. Completely. Okay? Now, again, this is just a drill. Okay? This is not how I'm telling you how to fight. So, what I want you to do now is slide your foot in, but keep the upper body behind you. Slide in. That's it. So now he's going to have this motion, which we've been working on, plus this motion. Okay? And go punch. Yeah. Here, back again. This is your right side. He's a lefty, so this is actually his weak side. But he's doing pretty good. Okay? Let it hang. And slide in. And pull. Okay. So while you're doing this, make sure that this doesn't happen. You don't want the butt sticking out. Okay? This is still going to be under. So you're still tucking the butt this way. That means the abs now engaged, right? Get back again. Yeah. So we don't want to go like this and then go, oh, see the front knee? Front knee has to bend, right? Yeah. Go again. And hold it there. So he's tucking and he's keeping that knee bent. Get a good stretch here. So if I try to push against here and here, I, I can't even budge it. Okay? If he loses that just a little bit, now resist me. Okay. You see how that's where the energy goes when you punch. It goes into the shoulder, then it probably hurts your shoulder, right? Damage the shoulder, stretch into it. At the same time, if he does this, this is weak too, see? There's, there's nothing there. He's broken this side. Keep the side more forward. I think you're pulling this back. Push hard against me. Push hard, 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 hard. Push back against me. That's it. Now that's a solid position. That's a solid position. That's okay. Yeah. All right, just one. Okay, so a lot of what I'm doing now is done very slow and it's done under like laboratory conditions. So I'm trying to make it, I'm trying to set it up to demonstrate the best possible uh, view of what I'm doing. So you may wonder why sometimes I'm adjusting the pad or something. You know, the body is kind of roundish. You can hit the body in all different positions. The pad is flat. If you hit the pad wrong, it's gonna, it's not gonna, it's gonna hurt your hand, it's gonna hurt you, right? So what I wanna do, I'm gonna show the same kind of thing we were doing before but if you don't have somebody to hold a pad, you can put it up against something solid. It could be a tree, it could be a wall. Don't put it on the sheet rock where there's no stud. Make sure there's a beam behind it, some kind of stud behind it to support it. You, know, you don't want to have uh, pictures and things falling off the wall when you hit it, right? So something nice and solid. So I used this. I used to do hours of this when I was training with Sensei Kimura. Um, you have to get it right. If you get it wrong, you'll know right away. The wall doesn't forgive anything. The wall doesn't move. So if I do a punch, actually, let's bring one more pad. Okay. If I do a punch on here, I have to learn how to lock without trying to go through the wall because the wall is much stronger than I am, obviously. Okay, let's try. Just for height. Okay. So when I punch now, what I try to do this. Again, it teaches me that lock I was talking about before, where I'm trying to get this feeling, or basai dai feeling, is that twisting feeling. So when you hit the pad, think hit and bounce off, keep your arm going forward. Don't let the arm come back. Now I've lost all this stretch here. I'm trying to learn how to get that stretch, how to get that lock. So I'm in this position here. Now as I come back, I come back, and I try to turn my belly under my arm. Don't go this way, okay? This is teaching you a complete opposite thing. You're opening up, you're losing all the stretch on the side. You don't have to lock that shoulder. Everything has to be going opposites, opposites in the body, right? So when I hit, I bounce off this way, all right? So, this way. Now keep my hand going forward all the time, but I'm twisting my belly, trying to put my belly under my arm, all right? So, Drop if I want. Yeah, see? That position, right? Okay. That position. Okay. 
position there. Now my can the same thing, except that because it's the opposite side, I can't twist this way now, because that will be opening up. I need to twist the other way. Alright? So this way. Alright? This way. Twisting this way. Now at the same time I can practice dropping my shoulder. This way, see? But I'm still twisting the other direction. Don't relax the arm because now everything here just died. Keep stretching it. Because the end of one punch, check that one. Now we're gonna go over to line up is the next punch, which is the next punch. Each time one punch finishes, it sets up the next punch. But see how I'm bouncing off? I'm not trying to go through that. All that energy is going to come back into my arm when I hurt myself. So I bounce off. And what it teaches is, you want to be holding it? Teaches that even when someone's holding the pad, I can still get a good solid position. I'm looking for this stretch here. Alright. Everything's nice and tight, abs are tight, lats tight. Good stretch here. I can't stretch this if I lose this side. You see how this is all gone? This is weak now. If you push against me, I can't hold it. <laughs> okay? But in the other position, here I can hold. Alright? Much stronger position to hold from, right? So, but using using the wall again just to go back over it. You can also stand. Get this feeling. This way. Just practice. And if you don't hit too hard, you know you don't have to bounce off either, just to get the feeling of crunching. Side, but when you give it a good shot, you know, make sure you balance off. All right. Now, I'm doing both punches there, so if you think about the, the combination, the Mike and Yakazuki combination, it's the same thing. Two, three, like the penguin this is the kimura was talking about, right? Penguins walk this way. So one, two, three. Already I can feel these muscles are starting to work. I'm starting to get a little workout over here. So I just do the first punch. There I go. That's the position I'm looking for. Same principle works for everything, and even the oizuki. Step over punch. Same thing. I exaggerate this one again. I make like a big, big motion. See? One, two. So I mean, just getting this freedom to move my body. Okay? So then, drop shoulder. the shoulder and drop the other. So what I'm doing is I'm using this like a springboard. I pull down and I pull down. Eventually you're not going to see that. You're just going to see just a slight movement here. Now I've been doing mostly like a Gyakusuki position, reverse punch position, right? But what about the Maike, the front, the front arm, the front fist, the, the jab? Most people think, well, the jab is just good to keep the guy away, maybe set him up for the right, for the knockout. We should be able to knock him out. If you can knock him out with the right, we should be able to knock him out with the left, all right? Because it's technique, it's not necessarily strength. So, 
if I take the same principles of using this now, and I go one, two, see? One, two, one. At the end of my punch, I'm trying to connect this shoulder to this hip. So I'm trying to bring them as narrow as possible this way. I don't want to be this way. I want to bring my arm, this part here, as close to this hip as I can. But I don't want to lose the hip either. So I don't want to lose my third leg. This is very weak. So connect into the back leg. Okay, now leaning this way. Now what I do is I just pinch here and pull over. And that's the connection. Like, like I'm trying to hold a heavy weight in this arm here. Okay? So one, it pushes my hip that way. Two, I keep it there. Drop my shoulder. Okay. So just see, very easy to get the power. That position at the end. Again, it's exa an exaggeration. Now, we don't have to do that uh, when we go on, when we're doing kata or when we're fighting. We don't have time for that. It's just a piece of motion, right? So, if you get like a rear view of it, okay, I have a, a bucket of water here. I want to pick up the bucket of water. I can't pick it up with my arm, I pick it up with my body. And then I let my arm come. So, this works first. The body always leads. One. Exaggerated. 